Oh, that's okay. That should work. Okay. So sorry about all the craziness. We were trying uh -huh. to just zoom straight into the page and it was working, but it was choppy. So we're going to just kind of start over and do like a little brief part of what we've already covered, which was only like 10 minutes. And um, so I'm going to tell you guys how this Zoom came about. I have a sweet friend in this business and she sent me a question the other day. It was a three part question because she always sends long questions because she's such a detailed green like myself. And um, I thought, well, you know what? I think I want to call in the troops and I want to get everybody's advice on this and I want to make it to where everybody can benefit from this because I know that there's so many other people that are feeling the same way that this sweet friend is feeling right here at the end of the month. So I'm just going to read to you guys her questions as we go. And all of us are going to chime in and give you guys um, just some tips on how to deal with these different things. So let me pull up her questions. So the first question she asked is, she says, I am a people pleaser. I do not handle confrontation well. Both of those help me tremendously as a teacher. I think she teaches second grade. Yeah, second grade. But it's crippling me in this business. I understand and accept that no thank you or not right now or not interested are part of this deal. But how do you develop a tough skin for the very rude and nasty responses to messages? And then she says, particularly when they are people that you've known since you were a child or a teenager. And this, she sent me this message, I think, after when we were during that second um, sale that was going on. <clears throat> and she said, in the past 12 hours, I've gotten 25 of those nasty messages and have been told that I was removed from their friends list. So her question is, how do you deal with this negativity? How do you develop a thick skin? And so um, I have a lot to say about that. First, I want you to know, I want you to keep your why in mind. And I know that this sweet friend has a very big why. She's a single mom like myself and she's got three young children. And so when you can keep that why in mind, um, you don't care what anybody says because I know that every dollar that comes into my household is paid by it works. So if that person doesn't want what I'm, what I'm offering for them, I'm on to the next one. So for people though, that you're not in the same boat where that is, this is not your plan A, um, I don't know if you guys saw Nicole Owens um, live the other day that she did in the group, but I loved it. She was talking about, don't make this an option. Make this a must. You're working this as your dream. When you go to a job, you're building somebody else's dream. You're working for your boss, but you have to work this like it's your plan A, whether it is or whether it's not. And my sweet friend that asked these questions is messaging me now saying she can't find us. So let me send her the link real quick. So keep your mind, your why in mind. And when you do that, if your why is big enough, then you won't care what anybody else says. And if your why is not big enough, get a bigger why. Um, also, I want you to be proud of what you do. Um, I'm trying to read the conversation. Too. Be proud of what you do. And when you're proud of what you do, and when you truly believe in what you do, then when somebody has a different opinion than you. When you think this business is amazing, when you think these products are amazing, and I won't even say think, when you know what you're doing is amazing and life-changing, and people come at you and say, no, that's a scam, or no, stop messaging me, you feel sorry for them. You don't let it offend you because you, you know, you're kind of laughing at what they're saying because you know it's so far from the truth. So you have to stay strong in your belief for your business and um, use the products, learn to love the products, get out there and do some work and find some people that want to use the products because when they have success, when you have success, it's one thing, but when you can help somebody else have success, it's a whole nother story. So be proud, keep your why in mind. And then another thing that we talked about is um, make sure if you're getting a ton of negativity, go back and check yourself and just make sure that your message that you're sending is not super salesy. And Kristen, you had a lot to say about that. So I'm gonna let you take it from there. Yeah, I think if I, um, you know, if I, if that were somebody on my team, I would say, you know, what message are you sending? Let's, let's see, you know, what they're becoming offended by. Um, because maybe 
maybe there's some desperation that's coming out in that message and it's coming out like a major sales pitch instead of like you are wanting to help that person and you know that genuine caring nature is maybe lacking in the message um so now i kind of forgot what i you had oh. said i'll see them in the store <clears throat> yes so, um, you know, I think that for sake of time, we try to come up with this perfect message that's going to kind of can include everything we want to say. We're going to copy and paste it. We're going to send it to, you know, the 30 people who commented on our post about a free cleanse. And next thing you know, it says, you know, hey, how are you? I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. I saw you commented on my cleanse post. Guess what? You can buy one, get one free. It ends tonight at midnight. Isn't that awesome? I know you'll love it. Shouldn't we get you some ordered? It's only $36. Let me send you my website. Like, holy word vomit. So it, you ran into that person at the grocery store, you probably would have a conversation with them and say, hey, how are you? Oh my gosh, did you guys have a good Thanksgiving? How are your kids? You know, what's new with you guys? Like, you would have a conversation, right? So you have to remember that when you're messaging people too and, and keep it social. You know, this is um, about building a relationship and keeping that conversation geared towards that instead of, you know, being a super spammy salesperson. And um, I think that people just get a different feel for you if you – talk to them about what goals they have and how you can help them and, you know, show them that you have had a certain success with this product or someone you know has, or your customer has, and, you know, make it relatable so that they see that there's just more authenticity behind it. than you know, you just sending this based message. Yes, absolutely. And um, before we cut off, I just wanted to make the point too that um, what she said about in your message, you want to talk like you would if you ran into someone in the grocery store. So mm -hmm. we also want to do that when, like, if someone comments on your post and let's say they wanted it, they it was a cleanse post and someone said, I want information. It's really tempting to give them all the information that you know. But you wouldn't do that in a conversation in the grocery store. So don't do that in your message either. So when somebody does that on my post, I, I always go and I do like what I call a conversation starter. And I say, hey, girl, I, I just saw your comment on my post. Were you thinking that you wanted to try the cleanse? Or if it's a weight loss, I'll say, hey, girl, I saw that you commented on my post. How much weight were you wanting to lose? Just something to start the conversation. Don't, if they say they want information on the cleanse, don't give them information on the cleanse start the conversation. That's all you want to do. So keep that in mind when you're doing everything in the business. So the original question though, is how do you develop a tough skin? So anybody else, Ashley, Lindsay, I think it's on hold on here. Who else has some input on that? Well, I would just say guys, it took me 36 months to join the business and it was all because of fear. I was so scared of what people were going to think because I was one of those haters. I was one of those people on Facebook that had deleted the networks people and thought they were annoying. And so that was my fear was to be that person. And so I remember getting started finally after 36 months and I called my best friend and she was like, what the hell did you do? Like, you're an idiot. Um, I can't believe you're a part of this. I will not support this. And I was crushed. But that night, you guys, I, so I knew I did this business because we financially desperately needed it. We could not pay our propane bill, bill to heat our house. So I had a really big why. And I was working 60 hours. Um, and so I, you know, that night after she told that was my first night in the business. I was terrified then. I thought, what the heck did I do? And got in my own head. But then I read a quote on Pinterest that said, other people's opinions don't pay your bills. So you know what? The people that truly care about you, the people that are going to matter in your business aren't going to be nasty and mean to you. And if they are, they might come back around. I was not nasty and mean to anybody. I just ignored them and I deleted them off Facebook. Um, I would never be hateful and mean to them. But, um, you know, I mean, it's funny because 
is Kristen and I work together as nurses, and she wrote on my post one time after watching, how long did it take you to join? Three years? Year? Months. And so, um, but I remember her writing, she wasn't mean, but she wrote something about, I had posted about a promotion and she said something about, that's great and all, we're all happy for you, but we'd much rather see your dimpled babies. <laughs> and, um, you know, like as much as she was probably annoyed with my post, it was, she didn't get it. She didn't have the vision. She didn't understand what we were doing. And so, um, you know, don't count those people out, but don't, I mean, that's still stuff like, ugh, so rude. Um, I can't believe she just said that to me. And, um, you know, but really she probably did just, they wanted to see more of my kids. And so and I've gotten better about that. But, um, you know, you guys, you can't let other people stand in the way of your dreams. And I say that too, if you have a distributor that, you know, quits on your team or whatever, you need to know, like Jenny said, why you're doing this business. Because if you don't know your why and your why is it, don't just do some superficial why of like, oh, I want to get out of debt. Like you need to figure out how much debt you have. You need to figure out, like dig down deep into like your superficial why and figure out like the deep part of your why. Um, because that's what's going to push you through the crappy people and through the tough times in this business and through those. And so I think that that's really the most important thing. You're going to have crappy people. You're going to live in a really small town. And we had some really nasty people that works go through our town. And, you know, there's been a group of us that have really had to change the face of it works in our town. There's been a lot of nastiness. Um, but we stayed positive. Am I really cutting out? No. You're we good. Stayed, we stayed positive and we just kept going with consistency. And I, I swear you guys, positivity, if somebody pisses you off and says something hateful or posts something, um, you know, that's just nasty about what you're doing that seems like they're kind of trying to take a dig at you, like turn around and post something positive. Um, it's really not letting those negative thoughts plant those in your brain because then you continue to water them because you get convinced, well, maybe I'm being, you know what I mean? So I just think it's really important to get out of your own head, figure out why you're doing this, put your blinders on, and then, you know, like they said, you know, so you're not spamming people with a bunch of salesy posts, do those checks. But some people are just going to be jerks to you no matter what. And you know what? Those jerks may come around three years later and end up going, you know, Ambassador Damon like Amy did in 13 months. So you never know who those people are going to be. And a lot of times they're jerks because they're so intimidated by what you're doing that they think they could never do it. So it's easier for them to just be a jerk about it and make themselves feel better. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, Lindsay, you said you had something to add to that. Yeah. Oh, I could unmute myself. Yeah, so like, um, it's something simple, but like, just think about who, I don't know if this person who asked this question is a mom, but um, just think about this, like if your child asks you, you know, can we go to the, can we go do something which requires you to pay for something? How would you feel if you said, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that because mommy's too afraid to, you know, do this? You know, that wouldn't feel very good. So, um, you just kind of have to think about the bigger picture, you know, and, and what's most important to you. Is your family more important to you or those people who have really nothing to do with any of what you do with your daily life? You just kind of have to dig a little bit deeper and think about what is your priority and what's most important to you and what you would do. You know, I would do anything for my child and my husband. So you just kind of have to put that into perspective. Yeah, I think too, like, Sometimes I think that when you don't have the confidence in the business yet, it's easy to get offended because you're like, Ooh, are they right? You know what I mean? So you have to, you have to build your confidence in the business and the best way to do it is just by doing, you know, and getting out of your comfort zone and doing it. You don't want to, even when it's scary. And the more that you do, the more confidence you're going to have in the business and the more you're just going to feel sorry for them when they make a mistake. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> people who have bad things to say, I really just feel sorry for them because since joining It Works, it's opened my mind up to, you know, 
not everybody's like me and not everybody wants to do the same thing I want to do. But that doesn't mean I have to talk down to them about themselves or what they're doing. You know, it's just, I feel sorry for them, you know? Um, the person who asked this question initially chimed in on the chat and she says, I very likely sounded desperate in those messages because I am. What are suggestions for messaging without sounding desperate when you are literally scraping coins from the couch cushions for something to feed your children at that moment? So yes, she is a mom of three. So do you have anything to, to help her out with that? What are, so the question is what, um, what are your suggestions for messaging without sounding desperate when you really are? Is I'm I'm wondering if it's like a, a cold message going out. And to me, that's really hard not to sound desperate because a cold message is cold. And I prefer person messages. No. Wait, what? Like she's messaging people that she doesn't know, maybe. Or that haven't first indicated an interest in the products or right. the business. Um, so that's my idea, I guess, of a cold message, like when you are the first to initiate a conversation about it without them being the ones to bring it up. Mm -hmm. And I did that just a little bit when I first started in my business and um, realized very quickly that that didn't, didn't necessarily uh, work out the greatest. So I prefer to post and give them something to like or comment on so that I have a really good reason to reach out and make a conversation attempt and then it, it's excusable you know because they, they were the first to show interest or um, you know even if it's like a post that's kind of indirectly about the product or the business then we can just kind of have a conversation about something that may or may not lead into a conversation about the products um, you know because a lot of times people reverse splits themselves and don't even really mean to. Yes. Hold on. Let me answer Ashley. I do cold message. I cold messaged. Um, that was the majority of the distributors that I got in my first year. But I do think that you have to be very personal about it. Like I never messaged anybody that I didn't know. Um, but it was short and sweet and to the point. And I think it planted a lot of seeds that didn't grow right then, but then months down the road it did. So yeah, I think, I think it all just comes down to being salesy. And hey, one idea I have is do an event, find a free event or find somewhere that you can set up a table for free and that will help get you leads because they're going to, you're going to talk to them um, and then be able to follow up with them with it, without it being, um, you know, salesy. But I mean, basically you are going to be trying to sell something to them because, you know, you met them, talked to them about products and now you're going to follow up with them and see if they want to order or become a distributor. So I would highly recommend like, um, I know school fall festivals are kind of over right now, but, um, I don't know. Uh, Christmas. Um, there's, I know there's one in my neighborhood that's next week. All these, um, ladies just like are getting together and setting up their tables. Um, most of them do network marketing. So I would find a Christmas event and try to, yeah, Nicole said church events, runs, holiday shows. There's tons going on right now, but I would definitely do that. And you don't need, you know, the whole it works store to set up a table. Really? You just need yourself a party pad maybe and um some before and after pictures so okay. let's see turn who's saying that from ipads everyone i don't know who's telling me this hold on it says jenny you can share my story about the lc that turned on me and turned me oh uh we'll we'll talk about that later um it doesn't really go with what we were talking about i think um, okay, so yes, and another thought that I had is when you are desperate, like you literally are desperate, you want this to work as much as you want to breathe, um, and you still are meeting negativity, and you feel, if you feel like you're bugging these people to death, it could be that you 
need to have a bigger, like you need to reach out to more people. If you're following up with the same people over and over and over and over and over again, you need more people. Like I, I have so many people on my list that I don't have ample time to follow up with everybody. So like, I'm not bugging everybody cause I'm not really even touching everybody enough. Does that make sense? So reach out to them. Don't feel like you're bugging everybody and just talk like you're in a conversation. So that leads us to the next question but anybody on here at all do you does anybody have any questions you can type it into the chat you can unmute yourself um whatever you want um uh, somebody says someone says desperation annie moss so a lot of you guys know desperation is a breeding ground for miracles i think that's a good place to be at because you will do what it takes to get where you need to be and i love that that's so true because that's what we were talking about earlier. When your why is big enough, you'll do whatever. You'll do it as much as you want to breathe. So no questions, nothing to add. Thank you, Annie. Okay, so question number two then she asked is a different subject. She says, let me bring up the whole question. She wants to know about growing your network. message the question to myself so I can read okay she says growing she knows that growing your network is non-negotiable she says I work on that daily how do you expand your network beyond the confines of our lovely state I am in several groups but feel the need to develop more interaction in them before adding friends from them how can I expand to other states like the example I saw of someone posting this morning that they got a message from someone in Colorado and we're in Alabama for you guys that don't know. Um, so first I want to say, um, make sure that you have exhausted your warm market before you, for me anyways, I, I believe you guys can tell me if you agree or disagree. Cause I know that we all work our businesses a little bit differently and it's all working for all of us. So that's the beauty of having all of us to, to chime in. But, uh, for me, I work my warm market first. And what I mean by that is people who, if they heard my name, they would say, oh yeah, I know who that is. It doesn't have to be your best friend. It doesn't have to be anybody that you've even spoken to in the last 20 years, just someone who knows you and go through your friends list and um, make sure that, you know, reach out to everybody that you can there. And then um, after that, I worked on expanding that warm market first before I went into my cold market. And let me tell you what I'm talking about. Like I wanted to friend people who would say, Oh yeah, I think that's Brad's sister or, Oh yeah, I think that's Stacy's sister or, Oh yeah, I think that's so-and-so's cousin. So what I did was I, well, I did it wrong in the beginning. I went to every single one of my um, family members, friends list, and I friended every single female. Well, you know, Facebook will only let you have 5,000 friends. So I was filling up my friends list with a lot of people who really weren't active on Facebook. So now what I do is, like, if I were to do that today, I would go to my brother's page. And anyone who liked or commented on his post, I would then send a friend request to if they looked like they might be an okay person. Now, if they have, you know boobs hanging out everywhere and you know just you know somebody that I don't want to do business with then I don't even bother friending them I don't want to clog up my news feed with people that I don't want to do business with or people that are going to fill my news feed with negativity because I don't want that in my daily life so um that was great for me because they saw I keep my maiden name in my in my name on purpose because a lot of people in this area know some Shaney felt. So they're like, oh, well, maybe that's so-and-so's person and they'll friend me. Um, another little tip I have on um, that is before I go out and friend some people, y'all gonna think I'm crazy, but I will go back through my page and any obvious it works post I'll go back and I'll set the privacy to friends only so if they're not my friend yet and they're like who is this Jenny girl let me go to her page and check it out if they're seeing a ton of it works stuff they're gonna be like yeah she's just trying to sell me something and they're not going to accept my friend request so before I, I want my profile public so that something can possibly go viral and as many people can see it as possible but before I 
have what I call a friending frenzy, and it's not a frenzy, it is a uh, strategic, um, I will set my obvious it works post to friends only so that they will accept my friend request. And that's worked really well for me. Um, so you can also go to the friends list of, or not friends list, but the pages of people that you know that are super positive, super influential, and do the same thing there. And let me, let me make sure that I make clear that we are not supposed to do this at all. It would not be very nice to do this to another It Works distributors page. Don't go to my page and start friending all my people because I will block you in a minute. Um, so, and I'll figure it out too. But, because um, it's just not nice. But use your family, use your connections to grow that friends list. So I got a ton of notes on this, but I'm going to popcorn this off to somebody else. I know some of you guys have some input on that. Anyone? Ashley? I don't know if Amy's on here. Did she ever get on here? Lindsay? Hey, I'll see if my thing doesn't start cutting out again. Um, I will post a step-by-step -step shared post. Ugh, it's cutting out. Um, it's not doing it for you, but I think it does it for everybody else. Um, and so I will post a step-by-step -step steps or success page. Um, and that is really how I grew my business. And the be I mean, the beginning had a pretty big warm network. And like I said, I came home to my mom's house and I pulled out elementary school yearbooks. I went to school like three hours away. And some of these people I hadn't seen since elementary school. And you know what's crazy? My best friend from third grade, um, I've been Facebook friends with her for, you know, since I went back and friended her couple years ago, almost four years ago, and just this last weekend, she finally signed up as a customer. I signed up my second grade teacher by requesting her. So um, those are like, they may not be your warm network, but they're lukewarm because you've had a relationship with them at one point. So I went through and friended all of like my husband's friends from that he went to high school with. And seriously, we made jokes when he was, we didn't end up going to his 20 year reunion, but he's like, you're going to know more people there they're going to be the popular one and they don't even, they don't even know who I am. So you guys, those are like your lukewarm because you do have attachment to them. So start, you know, I friended my mom's friends and like Jenny said, like that's, that's lukewarm to you because they're going to be more likely to accept your friend request if they see that you have mutual friends and they're going to think, Oh, well maybe I do know her. Um, so go back to old like job places that you worked um, and stuff like that. So there's definitely, I'm going to post that shared post that really helped me. And Kristen said too, that she grew to triple diamond, um, you know, doing shared posts too. So I'm going to post that because I think it'll really help you. Guys. And I'm sick of hearing myself. About <laughs> Another thing that I do is um, like, if I go to, let's just say my brother's page and he's posted something and I comment on it. So I'll comment on it first. So then my name shows up in their notifications. It'll say Jenny, Shani Felt Kinnemer commented on so-and-so's post that you've also commented on. And so then they've seen my name and then I'm going to friend them. So I don't know. I just, that's my little strategy behind some of that. Anybody else got any input on that for these awesome guys? I'm going to look back at my notes while y'all are talking. How to grow your network. Um, of course, groups. We've talked about groups before. So um, one of the things that she had said in her initial question was that she was a member of several groups, but felt like she needed to do more interaction before friending anybody. I don't necessarily think that that's true. Like it's good to do interaction in that, um, in the group so that they see your name. But I think I a honestly go through um, like, so I'll start in suggested friends and I'll find somebody who has no, it works mutual for mutual, mutual. It works friends. And I'll go to their page and then I'll click on their friend list and find somebody else and go to their <laughs> friend list. And then that's when I start adding. So that way I'm so far removed that, you know, it, it's a new network of people. And what happens is Facebook kind of like picks on up on who you are becoming friends with. And then your suggested friends, will start to change and be um, like those new people that I added and accepted me, it'll start showing me like their mutual friends or their, their friends. 
And by then I, those people are just a whole different network of people that I don't even know. That's so, good. That's good. I like that. Okay. And then of course, um, growing your network through blitzing parties and events as well is a great option. Um, and then, um, in the groups, like, I think that you can friend them right away, but I think you're going to get more people accept your friend request if you are more active in the group. So they'll like, you could comment on a post that they've commented on and then friend them. Um, but I actually just signed a loyal customer last night that was in a twin mom group. And she said she'd been watching me for a year. I don't even remember friending her, but I know that's where it came from. So just friend them and they're going to watch you along the way. Now you're going to target specific people, but I don't think there's anything wrong with going ahead and friending several more people than you're going to target because people can watch you while you're targeting these people. And then those people may come to you. Um, any other questions about expanding your network? I'm looking at the chat now. Any other input? I know Nicole is on here. I don't think we've heard your lovely voice tonight. We'd love to hear from you. I don't see her on here now. Okay, next question is from her. She says, somewhere. She says, I have written and posted my goals all over my house. I have pro proclaimed them out loud daily. I have prayed over them daily. I am posting messages and following up. And I know there is always room for improvement. So I know I need to keep doing more of those things. The month is running out, but I am continuing to have faith that I can and will do this. I love that attitude. She says, I watch videos and listen to music to keep myself motivated. What do you have to keep yourself pumped up? And then she adds, those Israelites brought no thought they were going to get soaked when they approached the Red Sea until they took a step in and they saw dust fly up from their footprints because it was dry land. I'm right there putting my foot in and it is soaking wet. So I need motivation to take another step. I love that. So her question is, what tips do you have to keep yourself pumped up? So I want to start by saying, I don't know if you guys heard Joel Dunn the other day. I don't even remember what I was watching, but it was something. And he said something to me that I have never, not to me, I've never really talked to Joel Dunn, but he said um, to everyone, he said, uh, people always come to me and say, how do you motivate your team? How do you motivate your team? And he said, I don't want a team full of motivated people. He said, I want a team full of disciplined people because motivation when anybody can do it when they're motivated, right? Because that's when it's fun and exciting and we love what we do. Um, but there's going to come a time when in, in everybody's business and in everything you do in life where you're no, where that motivation runs out, you can gain it back again. And we'll give you some tips on that because that is important, but there's going to come a time when that motivation runs out and discipline has to take over. So the difference is motive, when you're motivated, it's fun. When you're disciplined, you do it anyways. So he was saying, I'd rather have a team full of disciplined people than motivated people. So I just wanted to make that point. But there are some tips to keep you motivated in this business. And I'm going to let somebody else take it and I'll chime in after you guys are done. So who wants to take that one? Yes. Hey, can I say something? Yes, I don't know who you are. Yes. Annie, it's Annie. Hey, yes, please. So uh, when you were talking, she made reference back to the Bible and, uh, and them crossing the Red Sea. And it made me think about how um, David said, or the Bible says that David had to encourage himself in the Lord daily. And so maybe when you're in that moment of discouragement, you need to find something else maybe it's outside the business, you know, maybe it's the word, maybe it's some worship music, maybe it's going back to your why and looking at, you know, your kids or your husband or that debt, you know, whatever it is, just to remind yourself what you're doing. And uh, you and I were talking earlier today about getting overwhelmed because you're just working and working and working. So maybe you need to step back and say, okay, what, it, let's look at the bigger picture of this. I know that it's not working out right now, but um, let's encourage my, 
or let me encourage myself in another way. And then you'll come back with a fresh perspective. Like you said, you uh, shower and paint your nails. Today. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Yes, I totally get Yes, thank you so much. That's so true. And, and like you said, it's not always about um, filling your head with um, business stuff. I, that um, interview between Stephen Furtick and T.D. Jakes that Ashley posted in the page, I have watched that thing five times. I watched it in the shower, part of it in the shower. It's like two hours long. But that, if you guys have not seen that, you are missing out. I sent it to my sister. She's not even in this business. I made Chase watch it. And you all need to watch that. That's like major motivation there. So you know who you are who asked that question. Watch that. Okay, so who else has anything about motivation? Look, I got a whole page in, it in the comments that it's crazy what will happen to your mindset when you dive really deep into the products. Um, do a full wrap treatment and you're going to find yourself so darn excited about this wrap again because like I did a full treatment after my second daughter. I did eight wraps and had mind-blowing results, was obsessed with them talked about the wrap, went on and on about it, signed a ton of wrap customers. And then I did that for like six months. And then I wrapped again and I was like, holy crap, I forgot how awesome this is, especially after the black pack wraps came out. So um, you're going to find yourself really super motivated by using the products every single day. I agree. So, anyone, anyone, I'm going to go back to my notes. So, some of my favorite people, um, I already told you, um, Stephen Furtick and T.D. Jakes are awesome. But Denise Walsh is, for you guys who are new and don't know who she is, she is the, a black diamond, one of the only black diamonds in our company. And she is, she gives amazing tips, but she also gives amazing motivation. And she's got endless supply of YouTube videos on there. So, I love listening to her. Um, and you can find your own people just go. Um, I mean, it's so important to do uh, self development outside of just business tips because it just is just go to YouTube and type in, um, what's that guy's name? That big guy with the deep voice. Now my mind is blank. I don't know who I'm talking about. Who is it? I don't know. I'll think of it in a minute. Just type in self development, listen to something and you'll find your favorites. Um, I think it is important, like you said, to post your goals. I think it's awesome to talk about your goals. Talk about it with your family. Post about it. Um, when I first started, I probably have them right here. Let me find them. This is my old notebook. Every month, I would write down in cute writing and draw, like if it was October, I'd draw pumpkins on it and I would write down my goals, like how many LCs I wanted to sign, how many people I wanted to help that month. I know I'm right now. They're somewhere. But I would hold it up, and I would take a picture of it, smiling really big, and I, that was a post for me. So when you put that out there, it's like, now I've told the world, now i got to do it. So that's a driving force for me. Like, I gave my word, now i got to do it. So I don't know if that works for everybody, but I also take um, red lipstick and write, like right now it says triple diamond on my mirror because that's what I'm pushing for. So how many times a day do I go, I go in my bathroom? I see that all the time. The kids say, mama, what is that on the mirror? So I tell, I have to tell them. And when you tell your kids you're going to do something, if you can't keep your words to your kids, then who can you keep your word to? So that's another motivation for me. Um, being around like-minded people, that is a big one. They say that you become the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. So if you work with a ton of negative people, you can't really escape that. So that just means you're going to have to do double overtime work in the self-development field. So you may not, um, you may not have a ton of positive friends. You may not have a ton of it works people around you, but you do have access to their YouTube videos. You do have access to these zooms. You can come to conference. You can come to the boot camps. Being around like-minded people is so important. Um, <clears throat> Another thing that I always preach is that you have to celebrate your planted seed because I think so often people become discouraged when they hear a ton of no's. But what I want you to know is that, okay, so 
all you admin people, all you leaders on here, unmute yourself for a second and tell me how many no's have you heard this month? Hundreds. That, how many? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I would guess three to four hundred for me. That's Not even a no, but like a uh, no response. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> How many did you say, Kristen? Hundreds. Yes, hundreds. Yeah. So uh, we're all hearing no's, but the more no's you hear, you're going to get a yes if you're following along with the system. You know, if you're sending out, you know, hey, want to join my team? You're going to get all no's. But if you're doing, you're saying the right thing, you're, you're, you're seeking help from your leaders, you're going to get a yes. And the more no's you get through, that yes is just on the other side. So, um, but let me tell you this too. When I first started, I verbal vomited all over everybody because I didn't know anybody to help me in this business. And I got um, connected with Lindsay and she was like, oh, you are really bad at this. And so she told me what I was doing wrong. And even though <laughs> I <not> say that, <laughs> but I'm appreciative. Uh, but so even though I knew the answers, I knew exactly the right answer. I just wasn't saying it right. So I was like, oh crap, I've already asked 700 people and I've done it the wrong way. And she was like, don't worry about it. You've planted the seed and they're going to come around. And do you know what? Most of them have. So when you're planting that seed, whether it's a yes or whether it's a no, it is helping your business. So every no you get is insurance for your future business. Think about that for a minute. So when you, almost nobody says yes on the first go around. Would you guys agree with that? I mean, like it always takes follow up. So you're planting that seed every single time you get a no. That's a new seed you've planted. So think about the farmer. He goes out and he plants his crops. Does he come in and cry to his wife because he doesn't have a corn crop yet? No, because he knows that it takes time. And it takes work to get it there. He pats himself on the back for a hard day's work. And that's what I want you to do too. The more no's you get in a day, if you have a day where you get one yes, and that's the only message you've sent that day, I would rather have a day where you've gotten 30 no's because those 30 no's are insurance for your business in the future. Now, they're not all going to come around, but maybe half of them, and they're all going to come around in their own time. So, one of them may bloom in a month. One of them may be a year. One of them may be two years. But you know what? You've planted that seed. Whether you're fertilizing that seed and watering that seed or not, someone is because they're seeing it works stuff over and over and over because we're awesome and we're doing a great job. They're seeing it from somebody and somebody's going to get to harvest that seed. And if you give up, it's not going to be you, but that seed that you initially planted is going to go to help someone else's business. So don't give up. Stay in there and celebrate those. Celebrate your planted seeds. Celebrate your nose, and just know that they're gonna they're gonna come around as long as you're following up. As long as you're still putting yourself out there and keeping yourself fresh in their minds. I think my kid. Oh no, that's Chase. Hello. Let's see. Anybody else got anything about staying motivated? I'm gonna go over here and read these comments. Someone says, I love TV Jake, Eric War, Worry. I can't ever know how to say his name. Who are you talking about, Jenny? I don't know. I can't think of his name. Burning Bridges. If I've missed any of these, then I, we can go back and address them in the group page. Okay, so who wants to take this one? Um, the last thing that I just wanted to talk about is tips for starting your December with a bang, ending your year with a bang. I'm so excited, like, of what we're headed into. Like, I don't this excited since I first started three years ago. Um, like, I have a tip, and it just came to me. I want you guys to work December 1st as if it were November 30th. That's my tip. I mean, sister. Because, I mean, hey. Because I know several of you are busting booty to make sure you're commission qualified, that you get one more point to get your Christmas cash, or that you get a little bit more volume to, you know, promote to a new rank. Imagine if you worked, you know, at, 
December 1st, like you, like it's the last day of the month. I mean, I know we say this all the time, but really, let's work tomorrow as if it were today. Awesome. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? So we are headed in. If you guys have not been in the business for January yet, oh my gosh, hang on to your hat. It's explosive. As long as you're planting your seeds now, like you're still going to get customers and distributors and stuff in, in December because December is really great. Like a lot of people think, well, people are saving their money. They're not going to buy our products. They're not going to want to do this and that. People have had an awesome month this month. Like I know like a ton of people who had an awesome month this month. So you can too. And people are in the frame of mind of spending. So um, I think that if you're getting a lot of people saying, no, I just can't afford it, then you just need to reach out to a new group of people that can. Um, because people are in the frame of mind of spending. So, but January, you guys, keep planting your seeds. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep pushing. Um, January, you guys are just going to, your mind is going to be blown of what happens in January. And then we have conference in February and they have all new types of announcements. Usually it's going to be new types of bonuses. Most of the time there's a new product and it's going to be amazing. So yeah, just what Lindsay said, work your business like it's the last day of the month. You guys are awesome. I love this page. Are you guys loving this page? Me too. All right. So anybody else, any questions at all? Type them in the chat. Unmute yourself. You can ask them. Anybody got any just input, anything that's working really well that you feel led to share? Um, I have a question. Okay. Um, so we were talking about uh, not being, not staying motivated, but being disciplined. Um, how do you stay disciplined during the planting seasons? You know, um, how do you not get discouraged? You know what I'm saying? I do. Because some, like, you know, I was talking to Ashley and she had posted on the success page that some, she was in a plateau for about 16 months. You know, that's, that's hard. I've only been in my plateau for maybe two or three months and um, it's hard. So yeah. how do you, how do you, I mean, I see the vision, I see the future, you know, that it's going to get better, but um, in the moment. So your question is, how do you stay disciplined? Yes. Um, <laughs> I know Here's I want to say that. that. I don't want to say Just say it, Jenny. Discipline is a character trait. So right. discipline means that you just make yourself do it anyway. So if you, um, if you have a job and you don't want to go and it's not fun anymore, but you need that money, you're going to go anyways. Mm -hmm. So. Right. You're going to do what you've got to do to try to make the situation better. You're going to try to motiv motivate yourself to like your job better. You're going to try to, you know, mend the fr friendships that have been broken at work or whatever it is. And that's the motivation part, trying to make it fun again. But the discipline is when you're going to do it anyways, when you're going to have a ethic and you're going to, you're going to be on your grind no matter what. So I don't know that there's an easy answer to that. In my opinion, when, how, Discipline is just that you just do it anyways. That's what I was going to say. Discipline is exactly that. It's discipline. Doing things when you don't want to do them. Um, you know, there were things tonight, like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to pick up all the food off the floor that my son, you know, did. this is a stupid example, but like, you do it anyway. You just do it. It's what you if you, you know, if I want a clean house and I don't want ants coming in and whatever else eating the food off my floor, I got to clean it up. You know, you just have to do it. I didn't want to always get up at five o'clock in the morning to drive an hour to work whenever I was working full time, but I did it. Yeah, I did it. I think so too. Ariel, I don't know where you are in your business, how long you've been doing it, how successful you've been, but I think that um, sometimes people that, people that are hard workers, so I'm not, not trying to be ugly to you per se. I just didn't want to sound like a, you know, ugly word when I said that. But um, you, I think that a lot of times people who are hard workers, they, um, they haven't seen the success yet in their business. And so they think, well, maybe this is not for me. Or maybe they had five months of, of huge success and then three months of not much. And they're like, well, maybe that's all there was in it for me. 
but I assure you that if you want more, it's out there for you because people are growing to ambassador, you know, every single year. It's not that the, the market is not flooded. It's not the company because the company's never been on more on fire, not the team. It's just if you want to reach out there and get it. And if you are having, um, you know, if you're doing the same thing you've always done and you're not getting the results that you got before, reach out to your successful upline and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is the how many messages I'm sending. This is the wording I'm using. What am I doing wrong? And I bet you can find some help that way, too. Oh, look at Gina's little boy. Is that Will? Hey, Will. <laughs> All right, guys, do you have any more questions? Thank you for your question. I just tell myself every day my kids are watching me, and if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, why would I expect them to do what they're supposed to do? That's exactly right. It's it, for me, that's a lot of what I do too because my kids know what I do, I'm doing and they know why I'm doing it. They're only six years old, but I, I, uh, I want to teach them early to work hard for what they believe in and work hard for what their dreams are. And so, if you are going to teach them that, you got to practice what you preach. I love that. Who said that? You're awesome. Have your children add to your dream board. I love that. I love that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and end this. I hope I recorded it, and I'm going to try to post it in the page for anybody who missed it. I love you guys, and I hope you have an awesome December. Bye.